Hey everybody, welcome to Planet Coaster College. Today I'll be talking about the 4th Dimension Coaster and showing you how to build one, though you might also know it as the X Dimension or the Test Pilot in-game. Now just a fair warning before we actually get into this, this is probably the single most difficult roller coaster to build, since its distinguishing feature is the fact that it has rotating seats on the side of the track, so you don't only have to pay attention to making the layout right, but also to get the rotation of the seat right. So this is a pretty difficult thing, which is made harder by the fact that there are only three of these in real life which are all very similar, uh, which I will be basing the coaster that I'm building in this episode on. Um, though with some slight variations to get a general idea of what this coaster is like but much of my focus is really going to be on how to get those rotational seats done right because they're super annoying and it's it's confusing sometimes anyway uh, let's get into it and start building one of these all right now to start off as per usual we want to take the station and raise it up quite a bit especially on these kinds of coasters they do have pretty high up stations uh, which I guess could definitely work since these coasters are very tall and compact and uh, doing this at least saves us a little bit on brake run and lift hill space uh, so I usually just go ahead and raise these quite a bit somewhere from five to seven cars on one train should be more or less good at least that's what they realistically have uh, so going with uh, about five cars over here is pretty good I think I would go for the average of six but this should do as well and before I get into the lift hill, I just want to curve around the coaster, which is what they, what all of the real life versions do to stay very compact. So I want to do that over here as well and just go down while we're in the curve. Something like that should be good. And what I'll also do is actually, I won't have the lift hill completely parallel with the station, but actually have it curve toward the station a little bit which is something that they do do in real life as well. And I guess it does save a little bit on space, so that's quite good. And I want to grab the entire first curve and smooth that out. Especially for simple first elements like this, just grabbing the entire thing at once and hitting the smooth button a few times should more or less make them smooth enough. So now we're going to get into a very important part, which is the lift hill. And this is important because it's the first part where it actually rotates the seats. Uh, sometimes it does mess with the seats, I think, on the part before the lift hill, but that's just a bit of an optional thing that I guess you can mess around with. But here it's the first part where we really want to work on the seats. Now, basically the way that these things work, let me just pause the game while it's in the station for a second. The way that these things work is you can see the seats like this. And once we start messing with the seat angle over here, when, when it's zero, it's just like this. Uh, but when we turn it up, it's going to rotate forwards and when we turn it down it's going to rotate backwards and so you'll see if I for instance turn this uh, rotation here to minus 360 it's going to make a backflip toward that track piece. Now obviously I don't want to do that because we're just on the lift hill and what instead I want to do is actually want to move one of these things forwards and um, have them at about 60 like that so that they're going to be lying flat on their back and that's basically what we'll be doing during the lift hill. So as you can see, when it gets there, it's gonna go to about 60 degrees. We actually uh, turn the track piece before that down to zero, uh, because this actually uh, illustrates another thing. Basically the way that this works in game is you don't have to set the rotation for each individual track piece, uh, but all you have to do is set a couple of track pieces with rotation and then the game is automatically going to transition from those different seat positions uh, between the different track uh, pieces. Basically, I know that sounds very complicated, but if we take away this rotation, so it's gonna go from zero at the beginning to 60 over here, uh, we can see that during this curve, the seats are gonna position themselves into 60 degrees starting from zero at the beginning and slowly transitioning to 60 at the end here. Now this is very important because you don't want to turn off seat rotation for every single track piece and just set it to whatever value you want to on every track piece because that's going to end up making the rotation very unsmooth. You just want to set a few important points where you know how you want to position the seats and then the game is automatically going to transition between those. Very important and that's 
basically the way you want to make these if you want to make sure that your seat rotation is going to be smooth. Now if I change the seat rotation over here and actually turn it on and turn it to zero, the next time that we can see the cars pass by, which is going to happen right now, they're going to stay at zero until they hit the track piece over here, which is when they're going to start to flip over to 60 degrees for the lift hill. Now with that little bit of theory out of the way, I want to start finishing the lift hill itself, which is interestingly quite tall for these coasters. They go anywhere from around about 60 to 70 uh, degrees tall, which puts them in hyper coaster range. It's ridiculous, uh, but that's basically how large these things are. So I'm going to make mine 60 and a little bit here because I don't want to go too big. And that is basically going to be the lift hill. It's not too much about that. Just want to make sure that the lift hill is about 30 degrees. And I definitely do want to make the chain speed a bit faster. I don't have any values on the exact chain speed, but 4 is definitely way too slow, especially for a coast of that size. So I'll just turn it up a little bit, and then we'll go into the first drop. Now, as we transition into the first drop, we want to make sure that we keep the catwalk and the chain around for just a little bit there, and then go into the regular track. But we're not going to go into the first drop straight away. We're actually going to have a small pre-drop section right here, where we go up again, and what we also want to do for this pre-drop is on one of these track pieces, we want to make sure that we turn on the seat rotation, otherwise these seats might start rotating on the lift hill, and that's something we don't want. So we're going to turn it on right here, and then we're going to get into the actual drop of the coaster. Now, what I usually do, because this makes my life, for me at least, a little bit easier, is um, I turn off the seat rotation and just completely forget about it while I'm shaping the track itself. And then once I'm done making the track, I change the seat rotation on certain places to make sure that the seats are rotating correctly. Now, I guess this is just a bit of a personal preference. I guess you can also uh, adjust the seat rotation while you're building the track pieces. Uh, but personally, I just prefer not doing it that way. So I'm just gonna do it pretty much the simple way and make the track first. Now, what's quite interesting about this, hold up, let me actually smooth out this entire first little section. I think I can actually make that a little bit more steep on some sections as well. Yeah, that can definitely be improved. I can just make one little track piece out of this, I think. There we go. Looks a bit better. Now, what's interesting about the first drops is that these coasters have vertical first drops. And so to transition into that, what I usually do is build three track, piece, three track pieces out of it. And um, for the last one, turn on the angle snap so that we know we can go exactly vertical and pretty much leave it at that. Shaping isn't perfect, but the smoothing tool should take care of that for a little bit. And then once we come very close to the ground, we can have a long winding curve over here to make sure that we are gonna come to the ground with not too many forces. Yeah, that still looks a little bit forceful, so I make that a little bit smaller, especially because the speed is so high when we're close to the ground. We want to make sure that this is a very long, smooth winding drop. I'll take that. And I think it's time to go into the first element of these coasters. Funnily enough, even though there are three coasters in the world with this coaster type, there are only about three actual elements that these coasters have. There's the Raven Turn, which is a, a sort of turnaround element, which looks like half a looping. There's the Zero-G Roll, which is just a Zero-G Roll, a roll as it goes over a hill. And there's the Lie to Fly element, which is when it goes from a, from a piece of track, which is upward like this, to a hanging piece of track. And those are really the only three basic elements that these coasters have, aside from turns and lift hills, things like that. Uh, and so the most sort of signature one, and one that I'll be starting with here, is the Raven Turn. It's very easy, it's just a half loop, and that is just about it. And um, the way you can make it is basically kind of like this, shape up a uh, half loop as you're going up here. And uh, of course we do want to make sure that the upper part of the curve is a little bit more tight than the bottom, and smoothing it out will also definitely make the curving of that a little bit better, especially around the bottom here, it's going up a little bit too quickly for my taste, so I'll redo that and make it a little bit larger around here. Make sure that we kind of have the, the sort of loop shape to it where it very like long-winded sort of goes into the looping and it only comes into a more compact curve as it reaches the top of the loop. 
So let's say something like that should more or less look good. Now what's going to be interesting about this, and this will look fine after a bit of smoothing, is that after the half loop it doesn't do anything. It's just going to stay inverted and that is pretty much the element. So on the other side of the half loop, actually make this a little bit smaller, uh, all we have to do is just go down again and we're going to be fine. And that is really all there is to it when it comes to this element. It's very simple to make and it's also a very strange element. And yeah, all we do at this point is basically just go down. I think I can make that a little bit lower. There we go, that should just about do. Now interestingly, and I haven't really been able to put my finger on this, the shaping of these raven turns kind of depends uh, depending on the cursor that you're looking at. I've noticed that X2 has a very different shaping to the turn than Dino Conda has for example, and they're both cursors of the same type, but generally all you really want to make sure with these elements is that you have this half loop element where it goes inverted and after that goes down again on the other side. I think that looks good enough. Now for the first other element that we want to get into here, I want to try and make a 0g roll for this coaster. And there isn't really too much to a 0g roll, it's just a heel with a roll in the middle of it. And uh, not all of these coasters have them, but I think there are very interesting elements to add to these kinds of coasters. And you'll see that once I get into the rotation, uh, into the rotating seats, uh, that there's going to be some interesting stuff happening there. So to make the zero G roll here, I just want to go down for a bit and then have a section where we have the top of the hill. And this is where it's going to start rotating. So I want to rotate this section 90 degrees, then get into a section where it's going to go straight, rotate it 90 degrees again. I want to make that middle section a little bit smaller and once we go down we're going to go back again and upside down and that is basically more or less what we're looking for. I know it looks very unsmooth at this point and you also you always have to kind of watch out with smoothing these elements out because uh, if you select the entire thing at once it may very well just ruin your banking so if I grab this it's going to do weird things. So I don't want to do that but I definitely do want to smooth out the hill once we get there. Now once that's all done, I think it's time to get into the rotation of the seats because that's pretty much what we're all here for. Now the way that I usually do this is for the first drop, uh, or what they would do in real life, is you want to have the seats facing downward over the drop so they're going to kind of roll over toward the ground as you go over this section of the drop. Uh, so what I want to do here is I want to go to this track section and I want to set the rotation over here uh, to minus 180 degrees. I also want to make sure that the track section that I have here is actually set to 60, so we're only going to start rotating here, so that's good. That is all set at this point. And what I also want to do is I want to rotate so that people are going to look toward the middle of the giant raven turn over here. So the entire raven turn, you're sort of pressed against your back against the track, and um, that's how that's going to work. Let's look at the rotation of the first drop here. It's quite good, uh, though I do think, yeah, I could actually set that a little bit earlier. I'm going to set it for just this track piece over here. That's good. And then for the track piece that's going to go up here, I'm going to set it to minus 270. And hopefully that should make it so that you're going to look toward the middle of the Raven turn here and be on your back against the track the entire time. And then once we get to the top section, and I'm just going to select a small section here. Um, I want to set it to about minus 225. At least that's what I've sort of tested myself. And that seems to keep the uh, seats more or less horizontal as we go into the top section. So we're not going to go completely upside down. But then after that, I want to go to a track section here and go completely in the other direction and set it to 210. Now this is this is sort of an interesting little side note. You don't have to rotate the seats in the middle of the section as it goes down here. Um, but this is something that I believe Dino Conda does, which is one of the versions of this coaster type. And I think it's a very interesting thing. But anyway, let's quickly look at the seats as it's passing by here. It's going to start rotating people on their backs once they're here. And um, you can actually see as we're going to be in the looping here, you're going to look toward the middle of the loop the entire time. And then as you go toward the top here, the seats are going to stay horizontal. And after that, they're going to be rotated toward the next section. That actually looks quite good. That's more or less what we're looking for. Uh, now, interestingly, they're going to start uh, rotating back here. 
and that's something I don't want to do. I want to set it to 210 for this entire section. Did I put that to positive 210? That's something to keep in mind. Uh, yeah, that's positive 210. So I want to set that over here as well because I kind of want to keep people on their backs sort of facing upwards. Let's take one more look at it, make sure that we're on the right track. It's going to rotate over here, going to go upside down, and we're going to be lying for this entire section. Perfect. That is just what we're looking for. Now we're going to do something interesting here, uh, because at the end of the 0G roll here, we want to start moving down again. I can actually make this a little bit steeper. I just realized it's, it's not that steep here. And for the section that we have after the 0G roll, where we're going to go straight again, I'm going to move the seats... Uh, 360 degrees. So I want to have the seats doing a vertical 360 while the train cars themselves are doing a sort of 360 rollover during the 0G roll. I'm not sure if that makes any sense, but basically it means you're going to rotate in two different dimensions. And this is also kind of why I guess this coaster is called a fourth dimension because even though it doesn't technically break the fourth dimension, uh, you do kind of move in four dimensions. Um, but yeah, I'm going to rotate the seats 360 because I want to do a 360 during this thing. And because we were at 210 degrees before we went into it, I want to be at minus 150 degrees as we leave it. And that should leave us in the same position. And that should leave the cars doing a full 360 as they go through the zero G roll. Now, just as a quick test, I want to smooth out this stuff, make sure that it's all good and make sure that the zero G roll itself is smooth as well. And we're going to do a quick test again to see how it's running. So the cars are coming here. They're doing an interesting 360 on this section already lying down for a little bit and then while they are on the zero g roll right here i'm not sure if you can really tell um, but you can see them actually rotating as you're on the zero as well and then as you come out of it you're in the same line position that you were when you entered the zero g roll and that's perfect and just about what we're looking for now next i want to have a bit of a turnaround element because these coasters usually have an outback outback kind of layout to them which means that first we're going to get out there go away from the station then we're going to turn back here and we're going to turn again get out there again and then finally return to the station so this is basically the point where these rides would often find some way to turn around and this is usually just a simple curve it isn't really uh, that exciting of an element it's really a, a sort of a bit of a downtime during the ride so I'm not going to do too much special stuff over here, just a simple curve. Uh, but what I do want to make sure that is that I want to make this a very long winding curve because I want to make the layout as compact as possible and I really want to stay close to the track which I have so far. Um, and what I also want to do is I want to bank the track just enough so that we get some supports on the sides. As you'll notice, if you have a straight piece of track, you're going to have supports uh, like these. Uh, whereas if I bank it just a little bit more, we should hopefully end up with some supports uh, that I'm actually looking for. There we go. We can end up with the supports on the side. Now, I wouldn't say you necessarily have to bank the track this much, but I personally just like doing that uh, because it means you get some slightly better supports. I guess that's also just kind of whatever you prefer in this case. In any case... Uh, we're moving back toward the other side now. Uh, I do want to make sure that I sort of keep the track banked a little bit here and only start unbanking once we actually get to a very straight section. Uh, so something like that should work. Let's see, not come too close to the ground. There we go. And um, now I want to do something interesting over here, actually. In real life, uh, what most of them do at this point is just have a simple straight light to fly element, which is similar to the zero G roll. I'll show it off uh, in the last section of this layout. Um, but I want to do something special here because I do want to add a little bit of creativity to this coaster. Reason being is that there are only three of these in real life. So uh, there is sort of a, a template to how you should be building these things. But I don't think you should listen to that too closely because obviously this is one of the most interesting coaster types ever. And there's a lot of fun stuff that you can mess around with when it comes to these coasters. There's definitely a lot of creativity that you can uh, get to in the layouts and the rotations of the seats uh, that makes it worth not listening to the rules every now and then and instead just break them. And there's this really interesting uh, sort of elements to these kinds of coasters, which used to be a bit of a thing in the RollerCoaster 3 community on the Flying Dutchman coasters. It's basically an overbanked curve, 
but halfway through the overbanked curve, you're going to go into the other direction. I know that makes no sense anyway, uh, so I'll just show off what I mean. Uh, basically, we want to start going up and we want to start going into a curve. And now we're going to very slowly increase the banking on this curve here, kind of like we're making a corkscrew. Actually, I would say this is very similar to a corkscrew, uh, but instead of um, you know being completely upside down on the top, we're being 90 degrees on the top here. So basically at this point, we have half an overbanked curve. Uh, because we've got the curve here and we're banked over here and now you would normally say, okay, we're gonna go back and we're gonna curve into this direction again. Well, that's not what we're gonna do here. We're actually gonna curve around to the other side. To be very honest, I have no idea how well this would work in real life in terms of forces, but these things don't do this element in real life, but I think it's a very interesting uh, light to fly elements and it's definitely in the light to fly elements that I think you can do some very creative stuff with these coasters and uh, Not sure why my auto tunnel is on again But anyway, I want to end the overbanked curve over here. The shaping might be a little bit awkward So that's definitely uh, a small concern here, but it's it's not too big of an issue as soon as we get into these track sections Make sure to smooth them out the more you hit the smooth button the more it's actually going to become a very smooth winding overbanked curve. Let's see that. And finally the middle section. And um, I know that looks very strange. It is definitely a very weird element. And it's very heavily inspired by what Flying Dutchman coasters do. Uh, which aren't in the game. That might be interesting to talk about. Anyway, um, but it's an interesting light to fly element. And those light to fly elements are basically just one element where it goes from upside down to uh, straight up track or the other way around and there are many different ways in which you can build these things and I think this is really where your own creativity can shine through most because any part of a track can be turned into a light to fly element and I think there's a lot of creativity that you can have with that um, now to make the coaster a little bit more compact I do think I want to increase the curve on this thing a little bit and stay a bit more close to what we've had so far there we go and at this point, I think we want to start going up again. Because at this point is usually where these coasters usually go into their second Raven turn. Now what's interesting is that the second Raven turn is often a little bit different from the first one. It's still the same shape. It is still a Raven turn. Um, but there's a bit of a twist to it. In that it actually starts off on the top instead of going from the bottom up. And you start off... Um, with having the top being the uh, right side up part instead of the upside down parts as it is over here. Uh, so it's a bit of a slightly different element and I think that makes it quite interesting. I do want to start curving this around though because I'm gonna try and squeeze in the section after the raven turn over the track here to make my coaster as compact as possible so we'll see if I can actually make that. actually think in order to pull that off I might have to make this slope a little bit more gentle. There we go, let's just make that a rather gentle slope. And after that, go into the Raven turn. Not too sure how the speed is over here either. Uh, so that's something that I'll have to keep in mind as well. And um, we're basically going to do the same as we did for the Raven turn on the other side. Let's see. I think that's going to be a little bit too slow. Yeah, that can be a little bit faster. Let's make this a bit shorter. And we should be good to go. There we go. That is looking pretty good. And I want to have a very slight curve over here because I want to start moving over the track here. And we're basically going to go down and form a half loop over here. I always want to make sure to make these half loops out of very small track pieces just so you have a little bit more control over the loop. Uh, because even though this is a half loop, we still want to make sure that we get that signature teardrop shape into the loop here. And we want to make sure that the top part is actually a little bit more compact. Uh, of a curve than the bottom part because in the bottom we're definitely going to be quite a bit faster than at the top and we want to make sure that we're not going through this too quickly that's going to come very close to the ground I'll see about how well that's going to work out but it looks like after a bit of smoothing that's going to form a pretty good element so let's see um, that should be it for some general smoothing. I want to smooth out this section a little bit more. Don't want to have any hills where it has a very straight section. And finally, especially those transitions between the elements are very important. So let's grab all of that. 
This looks like it could use a little bit more smoothing. And finally, the bottom of the elements will definitely be smoothed out a bit as well. And I think we can go into the next section. Now the next section is going to be a very standard light to fly element. I figured I'm going to have to put one of these in the layout anyway, because this is, you know, this is a fourth dimension coaster. There's no way you can build one of these without the classical standard light to fly. So we're just going to get into that. It's very simple. It's like the zero zero, but instead of uh, turning the track 180 degrees, we're going to just turn the track uh, 90 degrees uh, or Instead of turning the th track 360 degrees, we're going to turn the track 180 degrees, sorry. So at this point, all we really want to do is make sure that we have a small hill going on here. And we're gradually going to a track that is completely straight and upward. Actually getting some very good supports here. I'm really happy with that. Sometimes it can be very tricky to get the supports right with these kinds of coasters. So it might take a little bit of puzzling uh, to make sure that you're not removing any supports that might be necessary because these coasters do have a very large hitbox and it's very important to be aware of the fact that these uh, coasters do have their carriages on the side of the track so you want to make sure that you're not removing too many of your own supports. Now let's smooth this out for a little bit and before I actually finish the coaster I want to do one last thing. I want to start at the end and make sure we have a small slope going on here and I also want to put some block brakes over here because this is where we're going to have to store the second train once we have it and I want to have some friction brakes to slow down the coaster and at this point I think we're pretty much good to go and make the connection uh, so let's see where we have to go with this looks like that's not gonna be too great of a connection let's see if I can have a very slight curve to this yeah that'll be more or less okay I can actually unbank this quite a bit doesn't need to have all of that banking I want to quickly mention that I added one extra car to the train since it was a little bit too slow for my liking, especially at the end of the track. And while these coasters definitely do lose a lot of speed and that's something to keep in mind, um, just adding that one extra car should hopefully make it a little bit faster. I think it could also roll over that hill a little bit faster, like the difference between the height of this hill and the height of the lift hill end uh, could definitely be a bit bigger. But that aside, I'm actually quite happy with the overall layout and the speed of it. I don't want stuff to go too quickly, but obviously we're not done yet. There's actually still some work to be done. So let's head into the editor. And before I do anything else, I want to quickly add a catwalk alongside the brake run, uh, just because we definitely want to have that. And also we want to go into the rotation of the seats. And this is where stuff is going to get complicated again, uh, though not quite yet. Uh, what I want to do with the overbanked curve and this is a little bit of an interesting kind of small thing, is I want to keep that same uh, minus 150 uh, degree rotation angle more or less for the entire curve as well. Uh, but there's one, one extra thing that I do want to add over here. I want to slightly change the rotation of the seats as we're going into the overbanked curve. I'm not sure uh, to what extent this is really true on most of them, um, but you can mess with the seats a little bit on the overbanked curve, like kind of turn them toward the track. And that's something that I do want to mess with here. Uh, so I'm going to grab one of the beginning parts, just turn on the rotation again here. And um, actually, I'm going to try to keep it a bit more smooth. I'm going to turn on the rotation here. And I'm going to go to a section in the middle of it. And turn on the rotation over here as well, except turn it to 120 so that we're actually moving toward the track itself a little bit more. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side of the overbanked curve and uh, turn it to 120. Normally you don't really see them doing anything super weird alongside these overbanked curves, so no double backflips or front flips or anything like that, but still a bit of spinning with the cars. I guess you still want to do something with it. And next, I also want to do some sort of spinning on this element. So just before we head into the element, I want to hold the same seat angle, just to make sure that we're not going to get some awkward rotations before we get into the element. And what I want to do with the element itself um, is I want to get to a 360 on the other side. Okay, so I'm testing the ride, and what I've added is a quick section where it goes to 360 degrees on this side. And you'll notice that the seats are flipping as it goes over this weird overbanked curve element. So they'll be doing a flip while also the seats of the train themselves are sort of 
doing a 180 flip, which is just going to make stuff a bit more interesting around this side. So now we're getting into the second raven turn, and I again kind of want to do a flip before we go into the raven turn and then look toward the middle of the turn as we're doing the turn itself. Uh, so I'm going to go to this section and set this to about minus 60, at least. While I was testing my layout, that turned out to be quite good. And I'll set this to about minus 150. Now also, as we're going into this last light to fly, I want to make sure that the uh, seats are revolving again as well and going back into the original station uh, sort of seat positioning. So I'm going to turn this to 150 before we get into the elements. And then at the end of the elements, I'm going to turn it down to about 160, which should provide some pretty good seating. And I'm going to do the same for this section on the brake run here. And then when we're on the brake run, we can transition to the seating element, which we should have at the very end of the coaster, which is all the way back at zero, which is automatically doing. That's pretty good, actually. And that is more or less the layout. I'll give it one more test to show you how everything is working and of course a POV and talk to you a bit more about what is going on. So let's look at the coaster one last time. So first off, as we're on the lift hill, we're rotating toward our backs, looking up toward the sky, and then suddenly we start going backward. And as a personal idea, I would definitely say that this second hill can be a bit lower. It's creeping over it pretty slowly, but the idea is there. We're turning on our backs behind uh, all of this area, looking toward the middle of the loop here, doing a pretty cool flip as we get into the end of the loop, and lying again underneath the track, doing a 360 flip as the track itself is also twisting 360 degrees then we go into the overbanked curve where the seats are rotating a little bit but not too much into the crazy light to fly elements where the seats are moving in all kinds of weird ways into the final raven turn where they're going to rotate again and at the end of this sort of be looking horizontally and finally a final light to fly element at the end of which um, they should actually be looking toward a different place hold up there we go my bad that should have been just a regular 60 as we had at the beginning of the ride uh, might actually want to turn that down to maybe about 45 degrees again i'm not too sure about the ways that these seats are rotated since it's hard to really measure it off of videos or probably off of being there in the first place but the general idea is that we're returning back to the original position as we get into the brake run there now finally of course I want to do a quick POV, so let's get into the ride. Let's skip the lift hill for a second, since that's, you know, the, the standard fare of doing a lift hill. Basically, the way it's going to look as you're in the lift hill is you're just going to be looking at the sky. Maybe if you're at your feet, I guess if that if that's uh, what you like doing while you're on the lift hill. And finally, we're going to head into the drop over here, look down toward our doom, and uh, rotate back to our backs and sort of look into the middle of the loop. That's always something that I really like seeing. I'm gonna flip again, listen to some weird techno music, and um, the absolutely crazy ridiculous zero-g roll where everything is twisting in 360 degrees. Looking a bit toward the overbanked curve over here, and finally rotating back again here. Doing the crazy elements where it moves to the other side. I'm actually quite a fan of that one. And flipping again as we go into the final raven turn. And finally a light to fly element. And that should finish off the ride pretty nicely. Yeah, I think I could actually move that final light to fly to about 45, maybe 30 degrees, something like that. Again, a lot of this also comes down to whatever you prefer and what your taste really is. And a lot of trial and error to make sure that the position of the seats are right. But this is a general idea. This is really what the footprint of many of these rides look like. Quite compact, very lengthy and narrow. And um, they do have very impressive skylines with those signature first drops, with the small pre-drops, uh, all of those raven turns around here, and those large uh, overbanked curves around the side. So yeah, this is basically a fourth dimension type of coaster. Definitely don't take this as a blueprint to make exact copies of this. This is very much like the standard uh, four-dimensional coasters out there. Um, I would just say sort of follow the same templates, but it can be a lot of fun to try and be as creative as you can with some of these elements because this is, 
you know, this is one of the most difficult courses, but this is at the same time one of the most creative courses. There is so much you can do with those light to fly elements and with the inversions uh, in combination with the rotating seats. So definitely this is a hard coaster to get used to and it's a very hard coaster to actually master. Uh, but once you've actually, you know, got the basics done and you can handle it, it's a lot of fun to try and mess around with this coaster and come up with your own layouts. So that's basically all I have to say for this episode. This was also incidentally to sort of end this video again with some random coaster stuff. Uh, this was also incidentally my last arrow video of the uh, Planet Coaster College series. My intention at this point was to go through all of the arrow and the SNS coasters because SNS has uh, pretty much bought all the rights to the old arrow rides. Um, so yeah. This is pretty much my last of the Arrow versus SNS things, and it's also the one that I was uh, afraid of the most myself, since it's quite a difficult one. But what's interesting about this is that this is originally an Arrow ride. Arrow was the company that developed X, which was the first uh, fourth dimension coaster, and it was also the ride that eventually made the company bankrupt. And at some point, SNS bought the Arrow ride and uh, they refurbed X, made it into X2, which nowadays is known as one of the best coasters in the world, generally seen. And they've also made two other uh, rides of this type, Dino Konda in China and Ejanaika in Japan, which are very similar to X, except a bit larger and with some slightly different elements, but they look very similar. And I think uh, without any prior knowledge of what exactly the differences between these coasters are, you might as well mistake them as complete copies. So yeah, this is this is both an Arrow and an SNS ride at the same time, and it's one of the most interesting rides out there. Actually, something that I haven't talked about uh, is that the way that these cars are rotating is not with any computer technology or anything that's remotely controlled, but actually with a second rails uh, on the track. You've got the rails on the side here, uh, which there are some wheels running on those rails on the sides, and they are controlling these mechanisms which you see over here, which is spinning the seats on the sides. Now, in Planet Coaster itself, and I guess I really can't hate on Frontier for this because it would have been way too difficult and uh, time and money consuming to actually get into that. But in Planet Coaster itself, uh, there isn't really anything going on with those reels on the sides. They're really just there for realism. Uh, but in real life, you'll actually be able to tell uh, that these rails on the sides are moving up and down in relation to the actual rails that the coaster is running on. Uh, so you can actually tell by the way that the rails looks what kind of rotation the car is going to do at that point, which is super interesting. This is, in terms of engineering feats, this is one of the most fascinating roller coasters out there. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's basically my my coaster nerd for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I am super glad to have it done since this was really the most difficult Planet Coaster College to do so far. But of course, as always, uh, don't be afraid to leave your feedback or questions if you have them um, or any improvements that I should be making and I'll gladly consider it. So yeah, again, thank you guys for watching. I hope you learned something and I'll see you guys in the next video.